I watch the same stuff over and over. For them, it's I want really great, high quality content, and I want it all the time, regularly refreshed. So it's really transformed the production pipeline. So it's really interesting to see how the trailblazers like like Tangent Animation is being able is able to transform the production pipeline on the cloud. Hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, welcome, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Jeff Bell. I'm the CEO of Tangent Animation. We're a, uh, a computer graphics animation company uh, headquartered and located in Winnipeg and uh, Toronto, Canada. Uh, so we're, um, we're about around 180 people at the moment. And uh, there's, we have about, I think about 15 or 16 people now in our development group. So there's Tangent Animation, which produced NextGen. There's uh, Tangent Technology, which is actually the, the, the technology company that produces the asset and project management uh, software that actually goes and produce, uh, helps produce things like Aussie, which we released in 2016, and uh, NextGen, which we released on uh, Netflix in 2018. So uh, NextGen was a very interesting film. It had a series of uh, challenges, especially at the startup that had to do with creative. So that really had nothing to do with technology. But um, all the way along, we used technology to sort of uh, uh, drive this show forward. And we also used our relationship with Amazon and Thinkbox and, and AWS to actually get the show done. The show itself was uh, it's a 96-minute show. Um, the real challenge here was that we had to produce essentially five well, sorry, three full versions of it, uh, two of which were stereo. So we had five different streams of, uh, of imagery that we had to produce, which, you know, rendering feature films takes a lot of work and a lot of effort, a lot of hours to begin with, and then add on top of that the fact that we had to do it five times over. So, um, so yeah, you know, it was a pretty complex film. We did things like gave the directors the ability to move uh, every single camera and every single shot. So there were no restrictions on that. There were no restrictions on like motion blur, depth of field. They had full creative freedom on, on uh, any shot. So if, there's, if you watch the show on Netflix and you see a static camera in one of the shots, that wasn't something that we forced on the director. That's something that they actually chose from a creative standpoint. Um, we had tons of crowds. I think our biggest shot was there's a, sh a shot in the stadium where there were 20,000 20, crowd characters. There were multiple, multiple uh, 3D volumetric explosions all lighting the stadium. Plus, we had the high-res uh, characters in the foreground and then some slightly lower-res crowd characters just beyond the foreground characters. So some extremely, extremely complex shots in the show, including this one here, too, which had a two-and-a-half-minute long camera move. So that was, uh, that was quite the shot. Uh, so another interesting point, we utilized Blender, which is an open source 3D application. We're heavy, heavily uh, invested into Blender to the point where I think we've spent the last two or three years about half a million, $600,000 in development efforts to help improve Blender and bring it up to the point where it can do feature films like the two that we've done. So. Welcome to IQ Robotic. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to see the next big thing? Woo! Let's hear it for the new Gen 6! I love you! It's cool. You love robots more than you love me. What's that, honey? Uh, all children must be accompanied by an adult. You're coming with me, young lady. Nope. friends you're gonna stay here tonight not you momo i knew that you judging me bruh you being here is like the best thing that happened to me why would you put weapons in a robot something terrible is about to happen holy mother of toast 7723 is our only hope we're floating just to feel alive. 
there's way too much injustice in the world. Together, we can fix it. I promise I got your back. <gasps> no! He's so cool! What do you call him? My friend. Here I go closing! Whee! So, robots, lasers, explosions, what's not to like, right? Um, so this was a collaborative effort with uh, our partners, actually our, our partners as of about uh, three or four months ago, they've actually come on board to join Tangent as, a, as an actual partner. Um, so the creative was initially created by a, a, a social media company in China called Bazo. Um, uh, so we work with them for, uh, how long the, the script was probably about six months, but the total production time is about two years, which included the pre-production time, the script, getting all the uh, animatics and Leica reels and all that stuff uh, done. The challenge here was to try and create a product, uh, like a, a feature film that uh, played to both markets in China and also North America, which is obviously a very difficult thing because so, um, you know, some of the, the tastes can be quite different. So it was really a collaboration between uh, a Canadian director, a US director, and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Olivia Howe, uh, one of the creative partners and one of the, the founders of Bauzo. So it was really quite an interesting, uh, interesting project to, to get involved with. The, uh, so, for the delivery, uh, standard 2K DCI frames, they were uh, uh, wide format, like 239 format. Um, like I said, we had five different frames we had to render because we had English stereo, Mandarin stereo, plus a 2D version for Netflix themselves. So that equals about three, so there's about 132,000 frames in a 96 minute movie or something like that. Is that 139? Yeah. Uh, so total of 365,000-ish frames needed to be rendered. So we were running calculations as to whether, <laughs> as to whether or not we could actually get this movie done in time. Uh, so you throw these things into the spreadsheet, do things like, you're never gonna get the thing right first time through. Uh, the way we do our renders and the way the renderer works in Blender though, you do end up getting a lot of uh, renders that come through first time um, with no problems. And we got approvals. Usually we, we would factor in a two time re-render, two and a half times re-render on a, on a movie. Uh, for this one we had 1.5 times. Uh, and then because of you know, not being able to keep the farm loaded at all times, we put, put in a 70% factor for usage on the farm. Uh, so we came out with uh, about 3 million, not 30 million, <laughs> about 3 million hours uh, for the, uh, the render requirements. So here's our little farm, uh, which actually resides in Winnipeg. And it's residing in Winnipeg because uh, of uh, costs for power in Manitoba is a lot cheaper than Ontario. So they're sort of typical, typical blades, like 32, 32 core blades with a Reasonable amount of memory in them, uh, pretty powerful. Um, yeah, so a total of 50, what, what do we got, 15,000 hours per day we could render on, the, on our own blades. Right, so then we ran the calculations and said, let's see, we've got about three months left, two months left, and we require 7.6 months to get it rendered on our farm. So uh, we obviously had to do something to get, uh, to get the show uh, through. And some of this came from wanting to sort of delay the creative choices made by the directors as much as possible to give them as much freedom. But uh, you know, obviously we had to do something at this point. So the two options obviously were to increase our, our own internal render farm, which require a lot of capital uh, costs, or to talk to our friends at Amazon and AWS and Thinkbox and sort of take a look at could we, instead of 
uh, increasing our internal render farm, it, start, you know, it really makes sense to start looking at the cloud for this sort of stuff. So we figured out how much we could render internally and then how much we needed to offload to Amazon and then worked with uh, Thinkbox and AWS to get this up and running on, on uh, Amazon. So the, let's see. So I think it was, yeah, it was just over a month, about a month and a half, 36 days. I, I think it was closer to like a month and a half, but yeah, we had 3,000 instances, including uh, plus our internal instances to get those five different versions of, uh, you know, left, right eye for English and Mandarin plus the 2D Netflix rendered. So that was, you know, it was quite the, it was quite the, uh, quite the task. Um, it's quite a fun task to try and manage, actually. So some of the uh, some of the benefits uh, turnaround time. One of the one of the biggest costs on these feature films is people. Artists are expensive. You know, good artists are expensive and they're worth it. So you want to make obviously give them the fastest turnaround on on uh, imagery coming back, so that they can make uh, creative choices. The leads and supervisors and directors can approve things quickly, and we can get the thing done uh, and basically put as much up on screen as possible. Um, the one thing that was nice about you sort of going to the cloud is you can defer a lot of your render costs towards the back end of the show, as opposed to sort of having to ramp up um, on capital costs at the beginning. So it really sort of allows you to sort of balance the cash flow requirements across the uh, the, the length of the production, which is quite nice. Um, every time we, you know, every time we ran into little problems here and there, there always seemed to be another service that we could utilize on AWS to help us out. And again, the Thinkbox guys were uh, and gals were super super helpful on that stuff as well. Um, so it's actually pretty easy to run the numbers on. Uh, whether or not cloud makes sense, and uh, I mean, it really does. Like, for us to uh, sort of find the real estate, do the brick and mortar to, uh, we actually had no more room in our in our, our uh, uh, data center in Winnipeg. We would have had to have uh, got more space, more AC, more power. Typically, you don't have enough power in, it, in these buildings to actually run these big data centers. So it just simply just didn't make any sense. The calculations were pretty quick and pretty easy. Uh, so what are we doing going forward? Well, uh, the technology group has sort of doubled in the last two months. We've made the commitment to push all of our production work going forward, including the one that we're in production on right now, which is a, it's a 270 minute worth uh, of footage show uh, into the cloud. So our next production will be done all on AWS. There will be some local caches and filers and things like that to try and cut down and back and forth, but uh, our on-prem render will still be used, but basically just for testing. The rest of the render will actually be done on AWS. All assets will be stored on AWS. We'll have streaming um, virtual workstations. So, you know, we're actually very, very excited about it. And we're taking the production pipeline that actually created uh, NextGen and releasing it to the public in Q4 of 2019. So, um, and with that, I think, I think that's about it for the discussion. Yep. So if there's any questions or comments or I'll be wandering around, feel free to come grab me. Happy to answer anything. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. So, uh, Lunch starts at 12, but if you guys want to go ahead and go out there, you can start networking, and, and we'll have lunch set out really shortly. Please be here by 12.55 so we can start with uh, the next set of presenters. Thanks, everyone.